Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to investigate Fedora 36, the latest edition of a Linux distro with a reputation for innovation and the use of leading edge technologies. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we are on the Fedora website where Fedora 36 has just been released. It's now the 10th of May 2022. But just before we go in search of a download, it's worth noting the relationship between Fedora and another important distro called Red Hat Enterprise Linux. The latter is a commercial Linux distro, we can see it over here, which is published by a company called Red Hat whereas Fedora over here is created and maintained by an open source community that Red Hat sponsors. Or, as Red Hat explain, the Fedora project is the upstream community distro of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Red Hat is the project's primary sponsor, but thousands of developers unaffiliated with Red Hat contribute to the Fedora project making it an ideal testing ground for features that eventually get incorporated into Red Hat Enterprise Linux. What this means is that the open source enthusiasts who bring us Fedora get to collaborate with Red Hat engineers at the frontier of Linux development. And this is also a key reason why Fedora is a popular distro with developers as well as others seeking a highly up-to-date Linux operating system. So, with this explained, let's go in search of a download, and if we scroll down here we get to different versions. Here's Fedora Workstation, so we'll click on Download Now. And on this screen we have two options. We can either just get an ISO file in the conventional way and write that to a USB drive using a program like Etcher or Rufus or something like that. But if we're using a Mac or Windows, and here I'm on a Windows PC, we can use a little utility called Fedora Media Writer, as you say, available for Windows and Mac. So let's click on the Windows link there to download the file, and we'll save it there in a pre-prepared folder, like that, just a small file. And when that's downloaded, there it is, we'll run it up, like that. Do we want to install and run it? Yes, we do. We'll agree to all this stuff and install like that, and uh, there we are, and we'll run it up because obviously that's what we want to do. And we'll go to Fedora Workstation 36, and we'll click the option to create a live USB drive. And as you can see, it's picked up the USB drive already inserted into this computer, which will be wiped by this process. And I'll click a little uh, box here to say, write the image immediately when the download has completed, and we'll let it get on with that process. And whilst it does, it's worth noting that a new version of Fedora is released roughly every six months, with each version being supported for 13 months. So there are no long-term support versions of Fedora, as we get with Ubuntu and its derivatives such as Linux Mint and Zorin OS. Rather, the situation with Fedora is that support allows you to skip one new release, but requires you to update within a month of a second new release. So, if you migrate to Fedora 36, you will have to upgrade to Fedora 38 sometime in the spring or summer of 2023. Now, in general, having to upgrade your operating system at least once a year is not something I'm a big fan of. However, I think that here, the support and release cycle are justified, as Fedora's target users are developers and others who always want to be using the latest Linux technologies. Anyway, by the magic of filmmaking, the creation of our live USB media is just coming to an end. And uh, there we go, it's finished. And we now have a USB drive for installing Fedora 36. Right, I'm now booting up my i5 test rig with the Fedora USB drive inserted and it's selected by default the second option on this menu to test the media and start Fedora Workstation, so I'll press the Enter key on that. And there we are, the media check is OK, so the boot process will continue. And, oh look, we've arrived! We can now try out Fedora running from the USB drive, or we can install it to a hard drive, although here it's going to be an SSD. So I'll click on that, which I think then means we get across to this screen where we click on that again like that to actually run the installer 
and I would point out I'm installing to a blank SSD, which is currently the only internal drive connected to the system. Anyway, here we need to make sure it's got our language correct. It has everything is fine on this screen, so I'll continue. And on this screen, it's also got the language right for the keyboard. It looks like we need to do something to check the installation destination is OK. And that looks like OK to me. It's on automatic. And uh, we'll just go done. And now we can begin installation. And there we are. As so often in computing, we've got a nice long progress bar. So we'll fast forward in time until it's complete. And there we are. Things have come to an end. So we'll click on finish installation, which leaves us on the desktop of a live boot. So I presume what we need to do is to uh, reboot the system. And so we'll do a restart like that. It would be nice if they told us exactly what they expect us to do here. But I'll uh, remove the USB drive. And hopefully the system will now boot up from the SSD. And here we are back on its desktop where we need to complete some setup, things like creating accounts. We didn't do that during installation, so we'll start setup. And here I'm going to turn off location-based services as I always do. We'll leave on automatic problem reporting to help Fedora, so we'll go next on that. And then on this screen it's asking if we want to enable third-party repositories. And this will enable Fedora to access various non-open source applications and proprietary drivers. We could turn it off like that. I'm not going to do that. We will just click on Next. And then at this screen, the obvious thing to do, I think, is to skip. And then here, I need to create a user account. And of course, I need to enter a password. There we are. So we'll click on Next. And oh, look, we're all done. We can start using Fedora Linux. And as you can see, it's using the GNOME 42 desktop. We'll take a look at that in a second. But for now, I'm going to cancel the tour because what I want to do is to make a few scaling changes so things will read better on video. And I'll come back to you when that's complete. Greetings. Here I am back again where I've made a few scaling changes, although not as many as I would have liked for reasons that will become clear. Anyway, like many Linux distros, Fedora 36 uses a GNOME desktop, and specifically here, the latest version, which is GNOME 42, which is very visually stylish. However, not all GNOME desktop implementations are the same. And so, for example, the GNOME 42 desktop experience here in Fedora 36 is somewhat different to what we get in, for example, Ubuntu 2204, which I reviewed a few weeks ago. Not least, if we go up to the top menu here and we select Settings, we discover lots of different settings. In Appearance, for example, we can change to a nice dark mode. That's rather wacky. We can change back again. We can change the desktop background. But actually, that's all we've got we can change here in Appearance in Fedora 36. And more fundamentally, if we go down to Displays, we discover there is no option to select Fractional Scaling. Rather, our only choices are 100% scale, which is a bit small, or 200%. If I apply that, you'll see it's rather large, even for me, we'll revert out of that. And this is a bit of a shame. And admittedly, we can go down here to Accessibility, and we can make the text a bit bigger, which I've done here. The text was even smaller on this screen, like that. And we could also change things like the cursor size. I've done that as well. But this is all the control we have available. And so Fedora 36 has the least control of interface elements of any modern desktop operating system I can think of. Even Windows 11 provides both fractional scaling and the control of text size, whilst in Ubuntu 2204's implementation of GNOME 42, fractional scaling is available. And so, to me at least, the lack of fractional scaling here in Fedora 36 is a serious omission. Now, it is worth saying that Fedora 36 is available in a number of different so-called spins that offer alternative desktop environments. And we'll be looking at two of these in the next segment of the video. However, as the GNOME 42 desktop we're looking at here is the default, let's delve a little deeper into how it functions. Where I think the key thing to say is that Fedora 36 uses GNOME 42 in a very pure form. For example, Whilst Ubuntu's GNOME 42 desktop has a side dock that by default is permanently displayed, as we can see here, 
Fedora has a lower dash. You might be saying, where is the lower dash? Can we see it? It's not on the screen. The only way we can get to it is by clicking the Activities button up there, and then we can see the dash, and then we can launch an application like, for example, the File Manager. And if we want to launch applications not on the dash, we have to bring up the Activities view like that, then go into the Applications view like that, and then run an application. For example, we could run up the calculator. So what I'm basically showing you here is that in Fedora 36, it takes at least two mouse clicks to launch an application if it's on the dash, and at least three clicks if you have to go into this extended application view. And to me at least, that's rather strange because in most operating systems, you can launch a lot of applications with just one click. We can't do that here. And you might be thinking, well, you could add applications to the desktop, but we can't do that either because if we go down here to the application view and we actually say right click photos, we can pin it to the dash at the bottom. We can't pin it to the desktop. And I'm sure there are some people saying, well, Chris, you can add extensions to the GNOME desktop to actually have desktop shortcuts, things like that. That is possible, but it isn't here by default. And to me, this is all rather strange. Now, this said, it's important to note that GNOME is intended to be used as a keyboard-centric graphical user interface. So, for example, we can press the super key, the Windows key on the keyboard, like this. And then I could start typing. I could start typing, for example, Libra to bring up LibreOffice. And I could now select my LibreOffice application, run up something like that, LibreOffice Writer. We've done that all with the keyboard. This said, having launched LibreOffice Writer, we've got another issue, at least for me, which is that Windows here in Fedora 36 do not have maximize or minimize buttons anywhere on them. And we can get this functionality, again, by having more mouse movement and more mouse clicks than we need to. We can go up to the bar at the top, right click and here, maximize, go up again, right click and restore. That works perfectly well. And again, there'll be people typing in the comments, Chris, you can add this functionality by more extensions. But this is a brand new operating system out of the box. We shouldn't have to add extensions to add basic elements to the interface. And I know other people potentially in the comments will be saying, Chris, your criticisms here are of GNOME 42, not of Fedora 36. But my argument against that is that the Fedora design team have chosen what they want to include and what they don't want to include in their operating system, in their interface. And as Ubuntu 22.04 very clearly shows, it's perfectly possible to implement a GNOME 42 desktop with interface elements that most users will reasonably expect. Now, before I get too negative, it's important to stress that there's lots of really good stuff here in Fedora 36. The system is fast and stable, which are two quick words to say, but they're difficult to achieve in practice. This is a very solid Linux distro, and there's lots of things included here for developers. There's also an excellent and very responsive software installer that doesn't rely on snaps like we have in Ubuntu. So let's just take a look at that. We'll go up to uh, Activities and bring up the software installer. There it is. So if we want to install something, let's go to Create. Let's pick a creative application. What should we have from this list here? Something to install. I don't know. Let's install my paint painting program for digital artists. We just click on it, comes up very quickly, click on install, runs on through. There we are. And hopefully now we can open up my paint here in Fedora 36. Now, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, Fedora 36 is available in a number of different spins, which provide an alternative desktop environment. So specifically what we have available is, as we can see here, a KDE Plasma desktop. That's very nice to see. We've also got available XFCE. We have got uh, LXQT. We have got uh, Mate. We have got Cinnamon. Hurrah, that's fantastic. And we've got a few others. We've also got LXDE and uh, even more down here, loads of different spins available for Fedora 36. And so what I'm now going to do is to try a couple of these out and we'll start with KDE Plasma. We'll click on that, where if we go down here, I think there's a download link like that. And for all the spins, we have standard ISO files available, which we can download and write to a USB drive to either try out or install the particular spin. And by the magic of filmmaking, here we now are in Fedora 36 with the KDE Plasma desktop. And I think this is very nice indeed. 
I've managed to do lots of configuration here. When I first installed, things looked like this, but now they look like this. As I've been able to make lots of different configuration changes to the interface, I've been able to go down to the panel and to go into edit mode and set all the options here, something you can't do in a GNOME environment. That's all worked very nicely. And I've also used system settings to go into appearance and not just set things like the different plasma styles, which is, which is great. I love KDE Plasma, how configurable it is, but I've also set individual font sizes, which in fact is a better bet if you can do it than going into the display settings, which are down here. Let's just go down and show you there are display settings here. If you use display settings here, you can set fractional scale factors like you can't do in GNOME, but I haven't used that option because here in Fedora 36, the default display server is Wayland rather than Xorg. And Wayland is still very poor indeed at doing fractional scaling. Even though I like it, I'd rather not use it in Wayland because if you can do it with fonts that I've done here, you'd get a much clearer display. So as you can tell, I'm very happy running the KDE Plasma interface here in Fedora 36. Everything is working very nicely. We've got a lovely menu in the place it should be, everything nicely organized. Let's run up, for example, system monitor to show you an application. Look, we've only got 5.8 gigabytes of space used on this system for the install of the operating system and all the involved software. This is just such a nice system to use. And we've even now got the controls to maximize windows and minimize windows and things like that. Anyway, much as I like Fedora 36 with KDE Plasma, I also want to try out another spin, which is this. And yes, we're now running Fedora 36 with a Cinnamon desktop, the most popular desktop used with Linux Mint. And again, I've been able to do a lot of configuration. When I first installed this, it looked like this. And now it looks like this. So for example, I've gone into preferences and I've gone down to fonts, which is down here somewhere. If I can get down there, there we are, font selection, where we've got a lot of control. We can do an overall text scaling factor or we can set individual font sizes as I've done here. And something else we can do in the Cinnamon interface, which I really like, we go into preferences and we are scroll down again. We can go to themes all the way down here. And over in settings here, we can set wait for it, the width of the scroll bar. Yes, we can make a scroll bar which is wide enough to be easily grabbed by a normal human being. Well, admittedly, we can do it in most applications. If I go back to the menu, you'll see that the scroll bar here is still a few pixels wide to present a nice challenge to those of us who need to use it. But if we launch, for example, LibreOffice Writer, you will see the scroll bar here. Look, it's easily grabbable. And for me, that is one of the great things about using a Cinnamon interface. This said, here in Fedora 36, if I was going to pick this distro as my daily driver, and I'd have no problems doing that, it seems a nice, solid, stable distro, I think I would probably not use Cinnamon. I think I'd go back a spin to KDE Plasma. So there we are, Fedora 36, a very nice leading edge Linux distro available in a range of spins. Although, as you may just about have gathered, I personally wouldn't select the default GNOME desktop. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please smash that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.